Welcome to Write That Down, a Probetus podcast. I'm Matt Fisher. To my left is Phil Irwin. Good afternoon, Matt. Good afternoon, Phil. And um, across from me is Mr. Mark Jensen. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome very much. Um, this is the part of the show where we have a, what does my agenda say? Uh, free for all, catching up. How <laughs> is everybody? How are you, Phil? I feel super tired. And I'll tell you why, Matt. Please do. I went on vacation last week for a week. Okay, so I'm already already feeling bad for you because you went on vacation. I went Continue. on vacation. Mark was taking care of me back to the office. So he was working with my clients, and you did a great job, by the way. I know I've said thank you before, but let me publicly again say thank you because you made me a lot of money. I appreciate it. But I have five children, and we went to South Dakota, and there's a lot of ways to die in South Dakota, especially in the Black Hills. It's beautiful. And that's why there's a lot of ways to die. And uh, so I had to be on 24-7, watching the kids, making sure nobody was injured too badly, because they definitely got injured. (laughs) But they didn't die. And so when I got back, I was so exhausted that I wish I hadn't gone on a vacation. And so I'm still catching up. Only now I get to work and try to rest at the same time, which is also difficult. And I think a lot of people are watching. They're like, we feel really bad for you, Phil, that you went on vacation yeah. and you're tired. Yep. I know that's how I'm feeling. How about you, Mark? Is that how you're <laughs> feeling as well? Right. Yep. <laughs> we wish that you were, you know, having a vacation from the vacation. But you're right. I mean, that is how it goes. It is. Yeah. You get back from vacation and it's like, man, I'm burnt out. That's why you have to work in that extra day. So you did not work in that extra day? Well, I did. I tried. So I got back on a Friday And so I did get to have the weekend to refresh, but it didn't work. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I I don't feel bad for you at all right now. I don't. Are you angry? I'm not. No, I'm not triggered. I'm not triggered. I'm not triggered this time, (laughs) but you did give yourself a buffer and you're still tired. Yeah. So now that I'm sorry, that's on you. No, it's not. Mark. Yeah, I guess. Oh, he's not getting (laughs) in the middle of it. Fine. (laughs) I I won't put you in the middle then. Phil, that's on you. Okay. All right, Mark, Mark, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. I'm wide awake, excited. We got some rain yesterday, and I tell you, it's been a great week. Last week was great. <laughs> I'm full of energy, Matt Fisher. <laughs> he can't be still. So that's how you're supposed to respond, and he's learning. He's learning. Awesome. I'm glad we're all doing I'm just today. excited to be alive in here, Matt. Yes, <laughs> it is wonderful. It is wonderful to be alive. Well, we are going to hop right into our quote for the day. Um, for those of you who have not seen our show, go back to you know our earlier seasons or our early episodes in the season or the season before where we give an overview of what we're doing. But the reality is um, I'm going to say a quote that Phil wrote down at one point, and we're going to talk about it. That's the gist of it. So here's the quote that is from Phil's notebook. It's kind of a long one, so I'm going to use my cheat sheet here. Um, and this one should be interesting today. I'm just going to say that to start. Um, and if you kind of think that none of our quotes have anything to do with promotional products or sales or anything, that is accurate. But this one surely, surely should and does not. All right, here's the quote. If your pee is dark, drink more. If it is medium, you're good. If it's light, stop. You've drunk too much. Write that down, Phil. (laughs) Now, Phil, why... In my right mind, would I be at the office? Because this all happens at the office, but this isn't like Matt is in the middle of, you know, a movie at home and he thinks of this thing. He says it out loud to the world and then texts Phil and says, right, no, this was at work and I don't know why that. Uh, I think I'm at 99.9% uncomfortable. Okay, Mark might need to (laughs) take a minute. Phil, do you even remember why I would say such a thing? I have no idea. Like, I remember this being in the notebook. I remember... It was said, so I know it happened. <laughs> we didn't make it up. The only thing I can gather or something that might have had to do with something is that you're also, you help with coaching, <laughs> athletics. So your children are in sports, and then you help with um, throwing. Is that right? Yeah, I'm a throws coach. Is that, is that a sport, like when you throw stuff instead of run? Yeah, it's, it's okay. a sport. So anyway, you coach people that throw stuff, which is admirable. So well done. 
I think it had something to do with that. You must have been working with some athletes and you were giving advice as to how to just make sure you maintain your level of hydration. That's my best guess. I don't think it had anything to do with work. Well, I'm, yeah, not work, I don't think, unless, I mean, if you're dehydrated at work, that's probably not a good thing. And I wouldn't have been talking to you about the color of my pee at work. I definitely would not have done that. It wasn't you, Mark. You weren't talking about your pee color? No, is that when you guys were doing drug testing? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> safe. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that. Okay, so we don't know why I would say such a thing at work. Um, well, let's just go back to the quote itself, like, do we feel as though there's some validity, life lessons, something deep and important that we should know about this? I mean, is is it's this even something we should be talking about right now, or should we just be done? Like, should we just call this the episode? We should probably be done. However, the clock is still ticking. So it's not. We don't have a clock. We can stop this whenever. Like, there's probably a bunch of people watching right now. They're like, "Oh, good. It's only going to be like a six minute <laughs> one." I got through it. I can tell Matt, Mark, and Phil. We watched them. You know, Grandma's like, "Oh, I'm, I saw your show. I saw the whole thing this time." <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not an original quote in the sense that I've heard something similar on previous occasions. Okay, please expand on that. Well. Like, it's, I, I like where, it's, like, at the doctor, at, you know, give me a context of where you've heard this. Oh, man. I don't think I've ever asked a doctor directly, but I believe it's now commonly understood that the color can determine things for you in a general fashion. Yeah, like your level of hydration. Yes, exactly. Like, from the quote where it says you've drank too much or... And, okay, I will, you know, last, I, last episode, I will say we did a... We did a lot of like sponsors shout outs to people that weren't really our sponsors. Um, this time, I think we should do random shout outs to people. So this, you know, this deep thought of mine came um, from probably John Sandy. So John Sandy, if it's 2023 and you, you've found us because you were digging to, in, you know, in the annals of the interweb and you found this episode, hi, John Sandy. He was my high school sports trainer at Grand Fork Central High School. And his quote was always, you can never drink too much water. It's like having money in the bank. So I would say that's probably the derivative. This is a derivative of yeah. that. Yet I said the thing about you've drank too much. So that makes it sound like I was probably trying to be funny or something. Yeah. And which you said to stop in the quote. You said stop. I did. Like, halt, you've drank too much. And can, can, can you drink too much water? Mark Jensen, go. Well, definitely you can, I believe, but I never drink enough. <laughs> okay, I'm, we'll leave it at that. But you know you don't drink, haven't drank enough. Right. Be- <laughs> Does it have any? Uh, yeah, okay. Again. Are you going to ask him how no, he no, knows? No. You're going to ask not. him no. how he knows. No, 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 I'm not. Okay, so, geez, I just lost my, th- where were we? Mark Jensen thinks that he does not drink enough water, but he thinks that you can or cannot drink too much water. Well, no, I think you can drink as much as you want, but you're going to be running a lot more to the bathroom. I know, but like, is there like a poisoning that can happen from too much water? Okay, I, Phil's nodding yes. his head yet. So we have Dr. Mark says <laughs> probably not because you just go to the bathroom. Phil is doctor. I can't say doctor. Dr. P. Dr. Phil. Dr. P. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Dr. Phil. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. We are doing random shout-outs. can be shout our outs. sponsor today. Yes. No, not sponsors, just random shout-outs. Okay. Dr. Phil, but this is Dr. P, which goes with his doctorate in what he's about to talk about. Go, Dr. P. It's true. My first name begins with P, which is fitting for this episode for obvious reasons. I believe you can drink too much water. I think just with anything, you have too much, and your body cannot handle it at the frequency that you're putting it in can't absorb it, doesn't know what to do with it, and things can start shutting down. Okay, so yes. that was deep doctoring because you didn't even go to, like, you just making something up like uh, your bladder's going to explode or, you know, things are going to start shutting down internally. It's Yeah, like Mark. Well, sometimes you have to go to the bathroom really bad. Your eyeballs do backflips. Have Wait, you ever had that? What? Maybe that's when you're overfull. Your bladder is. Don't you ever feel have that feeling? I, I think it just happened, <laughs> but I don't know how, how and why that would happen. Phil just looked up something. Are you like gonna yeah, be the I'm internet gonna doctor? Did you go to WebMD? No, I'm going to check and see if you can drink too much water while you guys are doing the episode. Okay. Yeah. 
And the peanut gallery says water log, water log. My, my mind goes to, for all those Seinfeld episode watchers out there, where it was the, the one where they were in the um, parking garage, and um, I, th- I believe it was Jerry that used the rest, used the bathroom. How do you say it properly? He, he urinated, I think, like in a stall, and then the police caught him, and they brought, it, brought him in. And he came up with the word, I think, uromycetosis poisoning. Please fact check me on that. Um, and, I, and he made that up as though it was something bad. So I, I look forward to hearing the truth about it. Did you find it, Phil? No. Okay. I think we, we can ask our producer to look it up because apparently my internet signal is not happening. Anymore. And our producer said it's waterlogged. Yeah. Which, again, Dr. Paul, um, we'll, we'll wait to see what the internet says on that. Can we flip the conversation to something that I think will be like inspiring and motivational? That's, that's your, that's your shtick, Phil. It's my opinion. Please inspire away. So let's just assume that most people probably don't drink enough water. Is it fair to assume that? I think if you do a poll of the room, poll of our readers, you know, people are always saying, oh, I really should drink more water. I I would say that's a fair statement because like it's, it's half your body weight in ounces is what I've heard. So... I'm going to pose the question, why is it that often things that we know we should do, things that we know will benefit us, are so difficult to put into routine practice, like drinking enough water? Questions out to the group. Mark, go. I don't know. I just think, like, for myself, I just forget to do it. You know, I have my little cup, and you start drinking, you know, but I'm like, that's just me. Maybe it's because I'm not a big drinker. Maybe. So, I mean, like, you just don't, like... Any kind of liquid, it's, it's unpleasing to you yeah. to. Well, actually, like body. it's weird though. I will say for me, like with drinking water, I can go to a restaurant and I can order water to drink, and I will drink five, six glasses. I pour a glass of water at home, and I can barely get a couple of sips out. Yeah, I just I don't, don't know why it is. You know what I mean? I'm just. I want to put a put a pin in that, because I, w- I want to come back to that obsession with drinking water at restaurants. I want to find out more about that. But, Phil, you posed the question, so why do you think it is people aren't drinking water and doing things yeah. that are good for them? I think it's on it's in the same lines as what Mark was talking about. I think that there is little enjoyment in something as plain as water. Let's say you're drinking a soda, for example. I think there's utils. Do you ever take economics? We talked about utils. It's just like an arbitrary measurement of pleasure, effectively. But, like, if you're doing something that you enjoy, that you think is fun, or you feel has benefit to you right now, I think it's easier to do. Or you can flip it into the social aspect. Like Mark was saying, like, going out to a restaurant, you're able to do it because you have an additional reason to be there. It's not just the task at hand. I think it's hard to concentrate on something that doesn't provide you instant gratification. That's, that's a good theory. I, I like that. Because and the world we're living in, people want that instant gratification more and more. So, and I think the other thing is, you know what? When you're sitting there and you're at a restaurant, or if you're even out at your local brewery or whatever, when you see somebody else doing it, it's just calm and you do it. Right. But when you're sitting at home, if you don't have a mirror in front of you, you don't realize. But you know, yeah. have you ever paid attention to that? I've noticed that too before. Like, even when I used to bartend years ago, you know what I mean? It's like it's just easy. Some you see somebody go. Put the drink to the mouth, they start to drink. You know, you see like somebody pop around, you get, too. yeah, it's kind of like that little message that's hidden. Right. No, I think that's all, all good theories, and I appreciate you posing that question. Now, um, we're doing something different here. We have a, it looks like we have a guest. We've got a guest. Yeah. I've, I've found the guest. Um, you got to turn up his volume. Oh, no, we got it. We got it. Um, intern, intern Katie did it. What? Oh. There we Hello. go. Hello. Oh, there Can he you is. Hear me now? Okay. Okay, so um, I did a little fact checking for you. Thank please, you. Thanks. Fact checked. Fact okay. Checked Dr. Paul. So, when you drink too much water, your kidneys can't get rid of the excess water. The sodium content of your blood becomes diluted. This is called hyponatremia, and it can be life threatening. The symptoms of water intoxication are general. <laughs> they can include confusion, disorientation, nausea, and vomiting. In rare cases, water intoxication can cause swelling in the brain and become fetal. Fatal, oh, not fatal. They actually call it water intoxication. I didn't expect right. that. Which I would, I would have to point out that I think you'd have to drink a lot of water because I know I have at least polished off a 30-pack of bush light <laughs> by myself at one point. So that's, that's a lot of fluid. That is. And, and 
I, I appreciate the fact checking and thank you for joining us. I also, um, I, I also wanted to point out too, because we have Probita's promotions that made these beautiful hats for us. If you have anybody wants to see them yeah. and I got white and I got black and I know you guys probably wanted one. So you need to pick a color <laughs> and then want, also yeah, one, you need sure. to get one to Savannah. I think she wanted a white one. All Perfect. right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. And, no, thank you for the hats. Mr. Fact Checker, I like it. It was super helpful. Next time, what I'll have to do is ask what the Wi-Fi password is, so that way I don't <laughs> deal with this issue. Hey, we're learning. <laughs> we, we haven't even got to the sound effects yet. So I want to go back to that, um, that pin that I put in, and this is specifically Mark Jensen. I need to find, you know, I think we talked a little bit about it by everybody's doing it, and that's why you're drinking so much water. But I guess the question is, You've been brought this water, which is a free beverage at most restaurants, especially if it's like a refill situation. That's what you're talking about. You're not talking about the Perrier that, you know. <laughs> so um, you said five cups of water. And I mean, like, legitimately, there's some cups of water at restaurants that are like those big glasses are like 30 ounces. And Mark's like, give me another one. Give me another one. Why in the heck do you drink so much water at a restaurant? That's five cups. That's too much. I don't know. Well, maybe I don't drink five cups, but you know what I mean? It's like, I better go sometimes through three, at least, you know. But you know what? I'm one of those people, I have to have a lemon in my water. So you're fancy. <laughs> yeah. I like so not that. only do you take the free water, then you have, to, you have to fancy it up with the lemon, which they also don't charge you for. Wait, right. this goes to my point. He's added something to the water to give him that instant enjoyment, which normally wouldn't be there. Well, actually, you know what, though? If you put lemon in your water, it helps you lose weight. Oh my gosh! Now we're now we're a weight. <laughs> we've got we've got a couple doctors. Now we've got some nutritionists. Um, th- th- might as well, Mark, tell us more about the weight loss benefits of <laughs> lemon in your water. Go, actually, everybody, pay attention. Weight loss one hundred and one. Yes, Mark yep. Jensen. You put lemon, drink lemon water, and you will lose weight because you know what? You drink lemon water, you have to go to the bathroom more, and as you urinate, you lose weight. Water weight, yeah. Yep, you do. Let me, let me just. Agreed. But let me play the devil's advocate here and say, like, are you also not gaining the weight that you're putting in your body? Nope, it's going right on. Temporarily. Out. Most of the fad diets that are out there have some water <laughs> weight component where you can get like, oh, yeah, you get that encouragement from the scale and then it's back. Boom. Fooled you. This is your weight loss tea. That sounds like <laughs> some fool's gold. Well, a lot of times, you know what? It just comes down to portion control. But you know what? Now this okay, no, no. Your okay, now we're going to continue. Go to it was like kind of a joke for a little bit. Like, oh, Mark's going to tell us about it. And then he, but now we're getting into port. Okay, go portion control. Oh, no, How am I losing like, weight, Mark Jensen? No, just portion control. You know, there's this fad thing and there's this, but you know what? It all comes down to portion control. You sit down, do you need to eat the whole pizza? No, you don't. But you know, that's where the, con- for you the, don't. Okay. No, that's where people like give people's money and they're like, they'll show that infomercial or whatever. It's like, yeah, do this. And you know what? Yeah. You'll maybe drop the weight, but you know what? Nine times out of ten, in about two months, they're back to their same weight. You are bigger. But you know what I mean? It's like, I think it comes down to just watch what you eat and your intake. I like it. I See like it? A lot. That's, I mean, truly, that's free. We don't charge for this podcast at all. You got free <laughs> weight loss, probably some, um, a little bit of health care, nutrition. I mean, there's a lot going on right now. So I think we're on a high. Like, I feel like we're pretty good right now. But is there anything else you can think of that would make this even a better episode? Thinking about, you know, the quote about urine. I think we need to pivot from urine to your doctor's visit today. Don't you think? I think he just uh, broke the uh, OSHA rule. I, HIPAA, I believe. HIPAA, and yeah. Yes, probably <laughs> OSHA. Um, but I was thinking uh, HIPAA. No, sorry. I'm just going to come to your my, doorstep and encourage body. you to get some medical stuff done. Well, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will throw this out there then. And <laughs> since Phil asked, I was like, okay, you know, we've talked about urine now, and your urine tells you if you're hydrated or not. Are there any other things that you have happened to your body or have had happened to your body where your body's telling you, Warning, warning, this isn't good. And I will start, okay, since Phil brought it up. <laughs> I have a fat hand, okay? <laughs> Look at it. Fat hand, not fat hand, okay? <laughs> See, fat wrist, not fat wrist. 
So I was getting in the car to go to church, and my uh, hi Asher. Uh, Asher was getting in the car as well before me, and we we had a little bit of a wasp problem in our garage. And um, little bit notes to myself, Asher had freaked the wasp out <laughs> to the other side of the car, which You're I was blaming entering. someone else. Not blaming. <laughs> he. We talked about it, right, Asher? Like this happened, um, and. It, the wasp came over to me. So in my geniusness, holding my water and the car keys and everything else, what a normal person would do is they would hit the wasp, right? Because that's what you do. You don't just like yep, play it cool down. and go on the car and not aggravate the animal that wants to attack you. So I did that. And surprisingly, the wasp stung me or bit me or whatever the heck those little devil animals do. And I went in the car, and I got really freaked out because the last time this happened, I it was like five or six years ago, and I think Mark remembers this because I I had, I had to work with it for like two or three weeks. My arm like Popeye'd up, like Popeye the Sailor Man was three <laughs> times the size. My hand was five times the size, and I was walking around with my club hand, and <laughs> that's how it was. And I knew something was gonna happen. And my lovely wife Abby's looking at me, just laughing at me, like, "Why would you hit the boss? First off, you idiot." And second off, it's just a little sting. You'll be fine. Got through church. It was all good. Even went golfing. And then Monday, bam, fat hand. <laughs> and sure enough, it was that way. And I'm like, oh, I got, you know, this charity golf tournament on, on Thursday, another one Monday. And I went to a meeting this morning. My friend, Ben Horkin. See, do you like how I'm doing it? Yeah. We've got three shout outs just in this little story. Um, I'm just impressed that you called him a friend. Yes, I, I no, didn't Ben Horkin, a friend. Friends. Yes, thank you, Phil. Thank you very much. Um, ben said, that happens to me too. Just go, go to the doctor, get some prednisone. So I went to the doctor, um, went in there, it was a PH. She's like, oh, this is the easiest one of the day. Yep, prednisone, you're good <laughs> to go. So I went in, took some prednisone, and then I was told that this might make you like hyper, take it in the morning. I'm like, well, I'm taking it now. I want to get rid of the fat hand. <laughs> so I took it, and I'm kind of feeling hyper right now. <laughs> All right, there's my story. Phil or Mark, do you have any stories about like if something were to happen to your body that your body's telling you, you should probably get that checked out. Oh man, I don't know. Mark will not. It is share really that funny. Story. It is really funny to laugh at people when they're swollen, though. I'll just offer that up. So your wife was laughing at your hand. Uh, I had a roommate. I wasn't even swollen at that point. She was just laughing at me. Yeah, I had a roommate. He and I have opposite allergies. So I'm allergic to penicillin, and he's allergic to amoxicillin. Didn't know it yet, though. And I came back to my apartment. And uh, he looked like a different person. It was frightening. So from the, from the allergic reaction he to had, the medicine? He had taken the medicine, and his whole body swelled up, and I just couldn't stop laughing. He looked like he needed to go to the emergency room, but I could not get out, hey, do you need help? It was just the funniest thing I'd ever seen. He did not appreciate it and retreated to his room. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of scary. So note to self for yourself, Matt, if you end up having a reaction and drop on the floor at work, Phil's not going to call. <laughs> don't he's going to laugh me. at you. I'm just going to no, laugh. No, he's, he's going to and take just pictures. Laugh <laughs> and it will be on Graham because he's still got gra the Graham. I still got the Graham. I got rid of the other socials. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will um, look to you, Mark Jensen, to be a lifesaver in the office if I hit the floor and, and I'm starting to swell up. Thank you. And maybe push away the paparazzi. I will do that. All right. And I'll give you some water. Well, we are going to. Um, Leave it at that. I would like to say a little plug for Probetus. If you need any swag at all, just check out probetuspromote.com. Um, and the other awesome thing is if you have not seen this podcast yet, check it out. We've got um, three episodes from season one and um, three from season two, and we will do be doing two more in the next couple of weeks to, to round out this season with six episodes. So. Um, until next time, Phil, uh, any last shout outs to any random shout outs <laughs> from your past life or present life? Man, uh, one of my favorite bands, Thrice, released a new song today. Excited for the new album. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> How about you, Mark? <laughs> Why did you put me on the spot <laughs> like that? It's just random. Just shout out like. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> hey, Matt Fisher. Shout out to Matt Fisher. What about what about our friend who you worked with? At that other place, who got awards for bags and oh, a shout out to Heather Werner, Heather Werner, and Mary Jo Esslinger. <laughs> yes, I believe Mary Jo will really appreciate that. So, I will thank you all and look forward to the next time we get together. <laughs> <laughs>